Hello, friends and gamers. Welcome to the Fortress. It is July 1942, and we are doing the British Commonwealth and the French turn. The Soviets have declared war on the Allies. Or rather, the Soviets began to do some combat maneuverings in the Atlantic, and so the Allies declared war on them. There was a bit of a mix-up there because uh, Panzer King had mentioned in his video, in his comments at least in his video, that the Soviets had gone to war at the start of his turn. And then we thought we were in position, but then it turned out a little bit later that we realized that Hilltop hadn't gone to war, and so we had to kind of backpedal and scramble and then redeclare war on him <laughs> after he was, began to do some combat maneuvers in the Atlantic, preventing his subs from going into the Mediterranean. Now there is confusion in the rules too, some you know back and forth. I haven't played this is actually the first time I played version three. I've had it out and looked through the rules a few times, so I've never actually played version three before. So this is a fun experience for me too, to see how it all pans out in plays. There's a in the nature of YouTube wars, there's always things that we miss. One player misses something, I forget to put something in my video, other things aren't seen in other people's videos, so I want to point out a few things. There's four American infantry here, I forgot to place on the board. They were in the place units box, and America gets them at the start, or sorry, at the end of the turn, or that war with a major power, so that's just an automatic thing. Another one was, Hilltop uh, didn't quite see that I had one militia present in this area here. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll for that militia. And he said, well, if he had seen that, if he had caught that, he would have sent some aircraft to this position. So I'm going to honor that and, and respect that. And I'm going to roll a dice here, hoping to hit a two and take off one of his units. Now, I expect he would have sent in sufficient air units to take out this. Um, he wouldn't have needed much more to go into this area. So he would have sent his sufficient areas to go into here. So I'm only going to do one dice roll at two, with two being a success. And if I'm victorious, then I could take off one of his units, and that will be his choice as to which one he wants to do. So here we go. Ten. So that's a, oh well, yeah, ten. So that's a miss. Okay, so that's one correction we need to make. And uh, yeah, so we will simply take this off the map, and I'll replace this roundel later on. If you see some things a little bit scattered on the board, it's probably because uh, I keep dropping things on the board. Now this air air transport as well. It came in from Moscow. Now, in his video, he came here, dropped off, and came back to Moscow. It's not specified when air transports are transporting units, if they drop off and have to stop their movement or not. But that's the way naval transports work, so the assumption is that air transports work similar. They go and they drop off. Now, I may be wrong with this, but I think in version 2, you can only go from air base to air base with your air transports. But I could be wrong. That's completely... Uh, you know, I've, I've got all kinds of different games mixed up in my head, so I could probably be wrong. Okay, what else do we got? We have a defensive roll over here against those submarines. So, British Convoy have anti-submarine warfare, so we get to roll a dice with success at two. So, another two defense. And here we go. Hey, look at that. It's a one. So, that simplifies things quite a bit. Okay, we'll take that one off. We still suffer those two hits on this one, so that is... Yeah, that's just the way that goes, so that's nice, I didn't expect that. Okay, so let's move on straight to the combat side of things. I may have forgotten a few things, but nonetheless, let's go. One correction here, I suppose, is this. I can't actually influence Argentina. So this is three bucks refunded to America. Additionally, I paid 13 bucks for every jet fighter. It's only cost 12, so that's refunding too. So America gets five bucks in their bank, refunded from what they had before. So that's our final correction. Now here we go. There is our economic table. So this is what our purchases are. Well, here we have two rolls happening. We're doing our radar as well as our improved factories. So I need to roll for both those because that has some impact on this over here. So I have two dice here ready. Um, both of them are success and a seven, so here we go. And I got, well, that's quite not quite on camera, but there you go. Both are successes. So we have both radar and uh, we have completed radar to stage four, and we've completed improved constructions to stage four as well. So that is excellent news. Now, I kind of took that into account. Um, as you see, I've not made any edits or cuts. This is just me complete, completely just hoping optimistically for the best result. <laughs> so taking that into account, I have here 31 bucks to spend. Two bucks that were raided by the Soviets, that's off the table. Two bucks were raided off by the Japanese. So I have 31 here. I'm buying four anti-aircraft, one fighter in Canada for eight, two militia, one infantry, 
for three, upgrading a militia to an infantry for two, and getting an airbase, starting an airbase for two. And that's going to go in southern Iran is the plan with that one. So that's all what goes on there, people. These are all our purchases. Now, for Far East Command, we have 17 bucks. So we're getting one infantry, one colonial infantry, and we're getting a total of five militia. Here we have 10 bucks to spend as Anzac, and we're getting a fighter. And in Canada, well, Canada, I need to explain a tad bit more. So as you all know, probably at this point, I'm the designer of the Canada rules. And so the Canada has this thing where they can get this aerodrome of democracy. So that reduces the price of any fighters built in Canada to um, a minus two for not fighters, but for any aircraft built in Canada to minus two. The negative to that is that you're so far away from everything, you know, from, uh, from Europe and such, it'll take a couple turns to get there. And you could only build one per territory. So you could theoretically build everywhere, but some of them will take a lot longer to get to the front because they're so far in the bushes. <laughs> so this is my attempt at that with the Canadians. First time I've done that as the Canadians. So the rules say specify a major power. If you look at the expansion and if you look at the history, it was supposed to be the Free French. Um, you know, the Free French, Anzac, South African, British. It's supposed to be everybody, including Canadians. So after this game is done, I intend to write an email to to uh, HPG and see if they'll allow me to tweak it to update it to version 3 and uh, do the actual intent of the rules because there's a few other flaws with the rules that um, that really need some taken care of, right? So we have eight bucks we're spending on a Canadian fighter. Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm not just coming up with this willy-nilly. Uh, <laughs> I've talked with Panzer King about it and he said in the previous video that they did, uh, previous game that he did, that's the way they played the Canada expansion too. It was all... Um, all allied powers have this discount advantage that they can take off. Of course, not USA and not KMT. They're excluded, but all Commonwealth and, you know, uh, Free France can take advantage of this. So here we have eight bucks we're spending on a fighter. We're then leasing three bucks to Free France. Now, Free France's income is at five. They lost one due to Madagascar being taken, so they could only be lend leased half of that rounded up. So we're still at lend lease of three. Now we have that's the, these three bucks, and two bucks we have spare left over for the next turn. I've debated building something with that, but I think I'll just, I think I'll just leave that. You know what? Yeah, I think I will spend these two bucks, and I'll begin another airbase, and that's going to go in Ontario. That will allow us to get things a little bit quicker to the front lines, going from uh, uh, Quebec all the way to Ontario fairly quickly is the is the idea and the plan. So there we go. That's all our money spent. So two airbases. That uh, improved factories came in handy this turn, or improved construction rather. So that takes care of that. All our stuff on this board is done. And now we go to combat phase. Combat is going to be... It's going to be a little bit all over the place this time. Unfortunately, um, there's a good few things happening here, there, everywhere. But it's scattered, but nothing too major at the end of the day. Let's start with up north. So those Soviets, I have a real passion against the Soviets at this point. <laughs> they backstabbed me and bamboozled me every which way. And so I have a, you know, I, I am out to target them a little bit, give them some pain for the hardship and the tears that I've shed <laughs> their broken alliance. So one thing that we're going to kick off this fight with is our, media, uh, our, our uh, strategic bombers here, our heavy as well as our regular, are going to fly from this position. So I hope that's on camera. Yes, it looks like it is. They're going to go from there, here in the British Midlands, go one, two, three, and strike at southern Norway. Now, I hope this is correct. I'm pretty sure it is correct. I, I believe uh, Hilltop has not changed this. So that is what is this, what's going on here. So carpet bombing going on there. Now, for me, that is five and three dice, all succeeding at a roll of two. So we have fairly decent odds in getting that. Let me just scrape up my dice. Alright, here we go. So five at two. There's no negative for the mountains. I'm seeing two hits. So that is up to him who, what he wants to withdraw from that or kill. <laughs> if he wants his two marines or, or his light tank, I expect there'll be a light tank and one marine. So that's that one battle. Now next one up is we have something here. So the Japanese very cleverly, so this is a very clever move by Panzer King where he went and struck against Madagascar. So I need to respond to that. So I'm going to send this torpedo boat destroyer. One, two, 
3, I can get to that position because I have this base. And from British Somaliland, I send this medium bomber. 1, 2, 3, 4. It has a range of 5, so it can go 5, 6, and land in South Africa if it so chooses to do so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, it can do that if it wants. So it strikes at that unit. So, um, yeah. So the defender will be... I'll move this dice tray over here. Okay, right, defender's going to be white. The aircraft's going to be red, well, orange in this case. And uh, the torpedo boat will be blue. So this will succeed at 7, 2, or is it 3? 7, 3, and 4. I may need to quickly double check to see if... Yeah, we roll out a 2. So, 2, 7, 4. <laughs> okay, so we take torpedo boat destroyer as casualty, but yet we also suffer. Uh, well, yeah, so those are gone. The destroyer as well as torpedo boat destroyer. So that takes care of that one. Alright. Okay, that is our second combat. Now, were there any other ones? Yes, there was a few in Australia. Just need a good position to park this thing. Sorry. There we go. Okay, in Australia we got a couple, a couple attacks going on. So from this position here in South Af Australia, we're moving one infantry across there, and this fighter is flying. One, two, three. It's got a few movement points left. And from over here, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to set up all the attacks first. So I apologize for that. I'm going to set them all up now. I just did that this way for simplicity, but I didn't even think about that. Um, here we go. There's going to be four militia going there, and this medium uh, motorized is also going to slide up to that position as well. So we have four militia in that. Sorry about that, people. That uh, is my oversight. I got a little bit too excited with, with causing some pain. <laughs> okay, here we have um, one submarine is going to attack this position. One submarine is going to attack... Whoops. Where is it going to attack? I believe it's just going to simply attack in this position here. Yeah, that's what it'll do. It's one submarine attack there. So that's going on there. I believe that's it. So on that side, that takes care of that. Now over here, we have some more action. So I'm going to move Montgomery for a second. So over here, we have these units present. And we have all this stuff here as well. So we have a kaleidoscope of interesting things happening here. <laughs> So we need to make some moves. So the moves we're going to be making are just a couple of attacks. So this airborne is going to jump on top of this unit. So air transport, and we're going to go one, two, three to North Caucasus right here. So North Caucasus is worth three bucks, and the airborne is worth three bucks. There's no air base here <clears throat> in Trans Caucasus. So that's what we're going to do. Snipe at that force air. If I could, I would have gone all the way to... Stalingrad, but unfortunately, couldn't. <laughs> so we take out that area. Next up, we have an attack here. It's going to go there. One, two, three. Yeah, that's what we'll do. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's what we can do. We're going to send one infantry up there. And um, so it's one infantry. One <clears throat> tactical bomber and two of these fellows right there. I thought I had another medium bomber somewhere around here. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So this fighter can also reach from Calcutta. So I had one in Calcutta. So it goes one, two, three, four. It's got two more spaces left. Now, one of these fighters is actually going to go all the way up north to that position. So I have two fighters up here against Turkmenistan and one infantry, two fighters, and a tactical bomber going over there. So that is what's going on there. Now, that's going to be a bit of a risky attack right here. And this one's also going to be a risky attack, but we're trying something out, people. We're just definitely trying something out. <laughs> we'll have to do our very best to succeed in this here. So let me set up the battle dice, and uh, this one may actually require a battle board. But maybe not. So let's do, uh, well, let me see if there's any other attacks. Across the board, I think that is it. Okay, I believe that is it for all my combat moves. So let's go ahead and roll our dice out. All right, so there's our dice tray. 
There's our dice tree. So our first battle will be up north in Turkmenistan. So the defending infantry will be um, white dice, and the two attacking aircraft will be the reds. So one hit against his uh, units there. Now at this point I'm assuming he's going to probably want to take out his aircraft, his transport. But we'll leave that up to him. So round two. Success. So we've wiped out his force in Turkmenistan with no casualties of our own. So that was a bit of a risky attack. Okay, our second battle will be in northern Iran over here. So northern Iran, I have a few extra dice to roll, and so this one's a little bit different. We have two red dice symbolizing the fighters, orange representing the tactical, and black representing our infantry attacking that position. Over here we have his white for his uh, infantry, and cavalry will be gray. So here we go. So I have one hit against him with my tactical, and he's got one hit against me. So that would take off my infantry, and I'm assuming he's going to take off his cavalry. So round two, we're going to push this to round two. Round two, we succeed in wiping him out. So that means we're lost of infantry, and his two units here are gone. Okay, now, that takes care of that battle. And I remember the movement of all these. I'll, I'll go over that a little bit later. Now we have uh, these battles on this side here going on. Well, not battles so much as raiding going on. So, we have... Let's see if I can find a place for this now. Right on. Okay, so the first battle will be up here with this British submarine and see zone 54. So see zone 54, I'm going to roll two dice. White will symbolize a defender, white flag, retreat kind of thing, and the red will be the aggressor, angry red color. So I have plus two on mine, so that's four to his one. So we are looking at a three damage against this convoy line. Next battle, we have this one here our Anzac submarine. And again, we have a plus two on our roll because he doesn't have anti-submarine warfare. So three, four, five. We're up at, this one's going to look at five, but we are reduced by that. Four, so we've almost maxed out this line with only one damage left to go. That takes care of that action. Next up, we have an action going on in Australia. Australia, we have two battles going on there, and it's, this one here we'll do first. So, as always, we're going to use our red, representing our aircraft, and our infantry will be black. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have their militia is going to roll a white. So, they'll be at two, we'll be at um, two for our attack, black dice, and our red dice will be at six. So, here we go. Nothing round one. <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. Round two. We succeeded, so we have taken off one of their militia, and we recapture Western Australia. Now we have this other battle a little bit further in in Queensland, and we have lots of cannon fodder on this one. So I'm going to grab some of my other dice. So I have four militia going into there, and one motorized against his one militia. So his militia is white, my motorized is black, and I have four at one. So we have no hits. This is almost a hit, but none whatsoever. So we'll bring it to round two. Nothing on round two. Oh, you guys aren't quite in the camera. Sorry about that. That is a, yeah, that is a major issue. Round three. Nothing on round three. Can you believe this? <laughs> round four. Nothing on round four. Round five. Nothing on round five. Round six. One hit. One militia succeeded. So he wiped out his militia there and captured Queensland, which means our income goes up to, well, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our income should be at seven. Okay, so I'm going to do non-combat move and... Uh, take these off. First one to do is this aircraft. So it came one, two, three, 
four, five, it can't go anywhere else, so it simply goes back four, five, I think. Oh, I could go six because there's an airbase here. Yes, there is. You go to that airbase right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we have to go back to this airbase here. That's where we go. Next up we have here for a bit, and we'll save that one for last. Now, th these aircraft are easier to remember. So if you remember, I had one aircraft come from Calcutta. So that went one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. It's this one right here that came from Calcutta. So one, two, three, four, five. It simply goes to here. These three aircraft are going to land in, well, they're going to land two of them right here, I think. That should be adequate. Actually, you know what? Let's let's put two of them here in Maharashtra. So we have two over there, one over here. And they simply went one, two, three, four. That's all they do. This tactical bomber also lands back in this position. Now, here we have our forces. That's good. These are wiped out. I'm going to take them off the board. And this is in, in still in Soviet hands, northern Iran. So that's something. Okay, next up. So we move these units here. And now we have to move some other units. So this infantry comes across here. Uh, Montgomery holds the fort. What else do we do? Okay, this one is a tricky one. Remember Auchinleck's forces here? They're going here. So that means this entire force here. So they are, well, of course, the ships have to go. One, two. So the ships all come to that position. So now we have Auchinleck's and Montgomery's forces here, which means that we boost this up. An extra mountain infantry and increase of inf regular infantry on there. So that brings us to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten infantry there. Two mountain, two militia, one, two fighters, one tactical, and a French medium bomber is what is on there at this point. So I can take this off. Cutting arms forces went here. I believe in their entirety. Yes, they all went there in their entirety. And so that takes care of that one. We have only one militia left in British Somaliland. Next up, we go over here. This one's a tricky one with Turkey. So this cavalry goes one, two to this position here. Now this artillery, I could actually rail that for a considerable distance. I could rail that all the way to Eastern Egypt if I so choose to do so. Instead, I think I'll simply bring it to here, to the Transjordan. That's as far as that will go. Leaving these two infantry hanging in the wind. So. They have two options, either going to cars or holding on to this position here. So I think we'll move them to cars. That way, uh, that way we have some options. I know they might get wiped out by the Russians, but nonetheless, nonetheless, that's the, what we have to do. So we've captured this for three. I have to remember to adjust my chart. Actually, I'll just do that right now. Boom. And this transport came up from this position. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I wanted it in a position where I could, uh, yeah, take it as a casualty if need be. Ready? Oh, so that leaves us here. So we've moved those units. These units here come up. There's nothing that could hit me here because all the transports are out of the way. So I'm going to move these guys up here, right there. Now I have over here one infantry that moves up to eastern Egypt as well, and down here I have one infantry that comes across to Sudan. Um, we also have this medium bomber. It had left a movement of two, so it goes one. Let's go one, two. I think here would be the best place for it. They used to hold that area, unfortunately. Yeah, that's the way she pans out over there. Okie dokes, so that takes care of that. That takes care of the Middle East. Unfortunately, this airborne and this unit they might have to be sacrificed just as historical. We couldn't afford to send our navy back in that position. It was either a toss up between saving our, our forces here or saving southern Iran. So we're doing our best to save southern Iran. This Gibraltar fighter can actually reach southern Iran from this position. One, two, three, four, five. Straight to here. That's where that goes. Let us see. Now we move on to here and our carriers. Now the carriers are a little bit more tricky because, well, we have the Soviets to contend with over here now. Sorry for the long-winded video, guys. There's a lot of nitty-gritty parts with allies. So these fellows go one, two, three, four. 
these fellows go one, two to this position here. Not just not just these two. I'm going to move a few other units to that position as well. So never fear. I'm going to move these two there as well. I think that's what that should be sufficient to hold off whatever whatever stings and barbs they throw our way. All right. So that is uh, destroyer, torpedo boat destroyer, and fighter in this position. Okay, next up we have a few other units here. So this Corvette goes 1-2 and goes on escort duty over here. Now these were on escort duty, but I dropped my phone the other day on the board and the escort marker went flying. <laughs> so they are still on escort duty. Never fear, I'll just simply move that. Oh, that's probably where it came from. Um, these fellows go 1 to this position. And I'm going to send this torpedo boat destroyer here as well. Bruce Frazier is taking control of that, and the last force is sitting up there. Now, I'm going to leave these aircraft behind, because they will come up with a better better thing going on here momentarily. Okay, so I have the Canadian fighter up here. One, two, three, four, five. So this fighter is going to land on here, and that leaves these two fighters here in the water. I think I may have to actually move this one down here, and... Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So this fighter over here, I'm going to move the jet fighter and this fighter. They're going to come one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to land in in Gibraltar is where those guys are going. Whew. Let me pause this for one second. Okay, so this Canadian fighter that was on this carrier goes to British Midlands and one of these fighters I flew down to Gibraltar actually stays here in the British Midlands as well. I think that we need a reaction force to deal with whatever happens to come our way. So that's what's going on there people. Now, uh, now, yeah, all right, let's move on. <laughs> so we have a jet fighter here, jet fighter, three militia, one artillery. That's what we got going in on in Gibraltar. So nothing too special. Let's take a look at this here now in the British Midlands because we need to actually prepare ourselves for an in inevitable attack in the near future probably by the Soviets you know if I'm not mistaken but we'll have to see so we need to ready up our forces and also we need to bring back the strategic bombers from Norway so those will land in the British Midlands that's where they go and now we need to organize this so we can expect up to six units attacking us in this position so we're going to move Two militia up here, one infantry, two militia here, and I'm going to say two militia here in the British Midlands. Okay, so that's what goes on there. So there's two militia in each spot. Now I'm going to move two infantry up here. The airborne's going to stay there. Well, and I'm going to rail. Hmm, yeah, I'm going to rail. Well, I gotta move the Canadians down here to that area. So that's what that looks like. So two fighters, an airborne, two militia up here. Up here we have two infantry, two militia, and here two militia, one infantry. That's what's going on there. We're also gonna rail one of these units all the way up to the Scotland as well. That's what's going on there. To prevent any more German attacks. <laughs> and uh this one's going to come across to the British Midlands, so that takes care of that. Radio. Okay, now I think we're going to place unit phase. Pressure, man. I feel that little bit extra pressure being on camera, so I feel a little bit pressured to make sure I have everything correct. So, let's go straight to place unit phase. So I have, I have a few things to build. I'm going to be building one anti-aircraft here in Northern England, one anti-aircraft here in London. Let's turn to here. We're going to take advantage of the Aerodrome of Democracy and build in Quebec. We're going to build one unit here. While we're at it, we're going to start the Canadians building an uh, um, air base right there. Now, I guess I could as easily build it here. That wouldn't cause any issue. But this gives us more range of motion, so I'm going to start it there. Now, I have a few more units in hand to place in southern, uh, well, in, in Iran. So, let's go over there and take a look at this. So, in Iran, we're going to be building one militia, which brings us up to three, but we're also going to upgrade a militia to a regular, which means that one of these guys will be replaced, the one I put on, for a regular. Well, not the one I placed, you know, a different one. We're going to use the factory to build 
uh, anti-aircraft. So in southern Iran, we're going to be building, begin building this airbase. We have one more militia to spend. So we're going to place that in here in eastern Egypt, and one infantry in hand to place on the board anywhere we like. And we're placing it here. But because we're placing it here, instead I'm going to rail one of the existing fellows all the way up here to Scotland. So that's what's going on there. So I have two infantry, two militia in Scotland, two infantry, two militia here in northern England, and down here I have two militia, one airborne, two, you know, bombers, um, should be an anti-aircraft here as well. Where did it go? Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, so yeah, that's what it's all, all in over there. Okay, oh, yeah, that takes care of that. Sorry about that. And because I got that strategic, or sorry, because I got the radar thing, I'm going to actually be moving these three aircraft here. Because I have unlimited scramble, so they can all come here now, and they can scramble to this territory here in southern Iran, as well as this sea zone over here. So we have a nice force here to scramble to, because of that radar. Last minute thinking there. We have one colonial infantry and one regular infantry. We're going to be placing both those here in Calcutta. Boom. So we're placing three militia over here, which brings us up to a sizable stack in this area. So let me tell you how much I have here. 16 militia over here. And we have seven, eight, nine infantry. And I have two militia left to spend on the board somewhere. I'm going to place one here in Maharashtra. Boom. And we're going to be placing one in Hong Kong. The Anzacs. So the Anzacs are going to simply place at their factory another fighter. And the Canadians are going to be placing up here in the Canadian Maritimes. We're going to be placing a fighter as well. Okay, let's move on to our economic table and what our collect income studies looks like. So I'm going to give the three black income to France. And let me quickly stop this and have a quick calculation of what I have going on here. Okay, so the income. So here we have our income we collected, our bonuses. So for the British bonuses, that this is one question you guys may be able to answer. Great Britain has this thing over here. And if you look down here, it says, if Iran is neutral or possessed by Great Britain. Now, usually when they talk about these things, I thought they usually are specific to territories. Now, I'm assuming they mean the whole of Iran. So I only get three bucks a bonus. So there's that. But let me know if you think otherwise, and if it's only for southern Iran, then I get an extra two bucks, which I don't. Okay, here we have 12 bucks for them. We have nine bucks for them. And over here we have four bucks extra. So it's 10, 9, 12, and this has got to be 31. 31. Okay, Wartime economy. There we go. So two dice here. Eight. Eight bucks. Okay, I will... I'll tell you where all that goes. So I'm gonna get what am I gonna do? One here. But I'm gonna give five here to the Brits. And I'm gonna give that over there to them. I think that will work out good. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Like that. So it's one, three, uh, one, two, and five over here. Okay, excellent. That works out good for us. And we're happy with that purchase. Now we move on to the French turn. The French turn. So the free French have nine bucks to spend, so they're going to be grabbing three uh, three infantry to pick up, and that's all they're going to do on their turn. Now, if we take you to the board, we have some combat moves to do. Nothing too drastic, but a little bit. Oh well, some of them are a little bit ambitious. So this medium bomber is going to do an attack. It's going to do an attack here. I know that unit has no good to anybody. It's just sitting there, but it just pisses me off to see it. <laughs> so I'm going to make an attack against it. Now the brave Frenchmen are going to take a shot at that torpedo boat destroyer. So the white represents the torpedo boat destroyer, and the medium bomber is this uh, yellow one. So here we have one at two, one at seven. Success, we wiped it out. So kind of a futile little gesture, but nonetheless, we do what we can. And so the medium bomber lands back here. Well, that will be a non-combat. We have one more attack here. And so the two free French submarines are going to come south. They're going to go one, two, three, and attack this destroyer, the Japanese destroyer. Now, I have the dice kind of prepared here. So it will be the two yellow dice will represent the submarines, and the white dice will be the defender. So it will be a... Uh, oh, Two blue will be the submarines and the white will be the defender. 
Round one, misses all around. Round two. Success. So one success for the subs, one success for the destroyer. Wiped out. You got okay, one destroyer left in that position. Not a bad exchange. Not great, but not bad. Kind of to be expected, though. Okay, so that takes care of our combat moves for the Free French. Just that one single attack. And now we'll spin our way back here. Now these three units, they're going to pick up these two infantry. And they're going to go one, two, three, down to this position here. Except for... Yeah, that's what they'll do. They come to this position right here. And they're going to drop off the infantry. Well, they're going to drop them off here in South Africa. This Free French fighter flies up from... Mauritania to 1, 2, 3, to Gibraltar. Okay. This air transport is picking up this infantry here. It started the turn here. I kind of did a simulation there. <laughs> it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and it lands in southern Iran. Then we have this infantry walks across, and these two infantry kind of walk down this direction as well. I may actually keep... I may keep these guys back here, actually. I think Right on. So that takes care of all the situations there, and all the Free French stuff has moved. Now, the Free French, they have a... Uh, well, let's go back here. So the Free French, they get to place their units, and so they're going to be placing... Oh, you know what? There's one more move to do, but it's not really combat. It's just simply come in here and pick up Obungi Chari from the Free French. Sorry about that. There we go. Gone. Sorry, I, I hope that's acceptable. Now, the Free French... Do have one more thing they can do, and they're, they're going to place the units in a territory they control. So they're going to place all three infantry right there. So we have five French infantry here, and a cavalry present at that area. That is it. That is all. Excellent. So now we move on from there to their collect income phase. So free French income is very meager. We only get five bucks this turn. Boom. Done. Oh yeah, everyone, thank you all for watching. Next channel out there will be Panzer King's Italian turn, so please check that out. And y'all, have a great day. Cheers.